and we're back. You're watching Sports Federation TV from the high-powered muscular world of bodybuilding. We've got another exciting sport joining us. From sailing, we have Cullen Catel and Sonia Stock to share news about their sport. Welcome, guys. Hello. Hey. So, um, Cullen, Sonia, how did you get involved in the sport of sailing? Uh, my family has always been involved in sailing, from my grandpa to my dad and my mom. So, it was sort of when I was like four years old, I got stuck on a small boat. And yeah, they set me off at Ziegerfle and I've been stuck ever since on a boat. So you were lucky enough to be born into this family that yeah. was sailing. And with you, Sonia? Pretty much the same. Um, I've been sailing with my dad since I was three, just on a small two-man boat. Um, and then when I was about six, I went on a boat on my own for the first time. And I, I, sailed, I got taught by him, actually, and I only started like, doing my own thing after that. Are both of you still in school? Yeah, I'm doing matric. Matric. Which school do you go to? Weinberg. Weinberg Girls. Girls. Mm. Okay. And, and I'm in grade 10 at Saks. At Saks. So uh, you must be affiliated to clubs, hey? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think we're both Zika Flair Yacht Club. Members at the moment. Uh, have you been there for, for the history of your, well, your competitive sailing? Yeah, I actually live at Zika Flair, so it's I can literally just walk <laughs> down the road to Zika Flair. Yeah, my gran and grandpa have live on Zika Flair, so I've always like grown up there and sailed there and, and pushed off my grandpa's jetty. So. Okay, so tell us about this high performance academy for the SA Laser Team. Um, well, we're a group of, what's it like? Eight, nine? Yeah, eight of us. Eight of us, and um, before this year, we actually didn't do any training or anything. We kind of tried to make our own way, but it wasn't very organized at all. And um, Roger Hudson and Razorhead and also SAS have kind of banded together. So, sorry, Roger Hudson's our Olympic sailor. They've banded together to form this um, squad for the youth sailors to as, as preparation for the Olympic Games, I guess. Wow, so, so eventually this is the, a long-term plan. Yeah, so it's actually just like organized training where we can actually learn properly rather than trying to teach ourselves. So we're getting more experienced sailors coming in and we're pacing ourselves against them as well. So we have like a point to aim at. Right. And well, you know, um, in past shows, we, ha we were fortunate enough to have the team here that won, uh, well, came second in Cape to Cairo. Uh, is that uh, type of boats or yachts uh, the kind of yachts that you would <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not, not yet? Uh, at the moment, we are on about two and a half meter size boats. Um, For s one person? Yeah. For one person? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so it's an individual event that you are yeah. training in and developing in? Yeah. Yeah. All right. How long have you been competing in the sport officially? Uh, well, I haven't been sailing this type of boat very long. I actually only started in um, January this year, but I've sailed um, different types of boats competitively since the age of eight, I think. Yeah. And I, I've only really been sailing competitively for about three years. Before, I was just sailing for the fun of it, and yeah. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it must be so amazing to be able to go out to sea uh, and you get to do it um, for a sport. You get to you, you get to go out there on your on your boat, and you get to do it alone. How often do you have to do well, or train, or enjoy it even? Uh, when we were training as a team to get somewhere, we were training twice a week, and then on the weekends you generally have a regatta or uh, event where you sail. So okay, but we only really sail in um, summer. So uh, if you think of like the school terms, it's term four and term one. Mm -hmm. And then in terms two and three, you're supposed to like train at the gym. And actually often people go and they'll do keelboat sailing rather. So that's when the, the bigger boats, um, like at Royal Cape Yacht Club, rather than our small dinghy sailing. Okay. Is it generally the training happening on the ocean or do you, do you also train in the dams and those type of places? Um, we spend most of the time on the dams because, I mean, like I said, I live um, at Zikufle, so it's quite useful because it's kind of a center point for everybody. But we're trying to um, start training on the ocean rather because all the Olympic events and the actual big competitions will be um, sailed on the ocean. It's very different 
to sailing on a dam because there's like swell and undercurrents and things that you have to concentrate yeah, on. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure everybody wasn't taking their boats out during the Cape Storm. <laughs> 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 Actually, a friend of ours did. Really? On a small boat. Wow. Is his name uh, Mark Wahlberg or something <laughs> like that? <laughs> Cullen, uh, you, um, you've been sailing, well, both of you, you've been sailing most of your life. And um, there's been a huge drive now from sailing South Africa to get more people involved in the sport, um, more youngsters especially. Have you seen growth in your particular clubs or in your particular environments that you socialize with yeah, for sailing? There's been a lot of growth in the past six months with the clubs um, really wanting to develop the sport and get more sailors enjoying the sport and having fun and then start developing them into the competitive side. But at the moment, each club is just trying to get people sailing for the fun of it and grow it for the sport from there. Okay. Well, you've got, you've got some footage and we'd like to share that with our guests. <laughs> we're going to have a look now. Uh, well, we're going to share that with the viewers. We'll have a look now. That looks uh, like some pretty rough <laughs> waters at Zikufle. Both of you are in that uh, that video. What was that uh, event for? Uh, it was just training. It was really to get ourselves ready for the events that we're going to attack on in the future. And it was to raise our level of sailing and improve at certain maneuvers so we can really compete with the highest competitors. Okay, Sonia, so what was the different types of maneuvers that you were expected to do on a training day like that? Um, we actually have a very basic structure that we followed each day because those are from a variety of different, um, uh, various different days in which we, where we trade. Um, we always start off with a figure of eight pattern because we have to practice um, our reaction times because they're about eight boats on a very short amount of distance. So you have to make sure you don't crash into other people. Um, and then afterwards, we would have done longer races just to uh, focus on our stamina. And then we do, again, shorter races to practice racing conditions. Uh, and you're racing against people who are all your same level. And it, it just, because each one pushes each other, then we did that every time. Mm -hmm. And then you can focus on the rules because we have a, a set of rules that govern sailing because it's a self-governed sport. Because they don't have people on the water saying, no, you're wrong. <laughs> penalty. Oh. You actually have to be like, okay, I did something wrong. I have to do my penalty. So wow. you had to practice actual racing conditions in order to make sure like, right. you knew what's clubbing me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when so you get to actual regatta. To put it beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with, with things like... Um, we will we'll, we talk about contraindications, right? So with things like wind speed and stuff, prevent an event uh yeah only sometimes like the event is certainly controlled between a certain wind condition so you will generally never sail below two knots and you'll generally never sail above 25 knots and that's about your zone of play um and and that is in kilometers per hour um <laughs> like five knots gets to like 50 50 
something. Wow, wow. that's yeah. that's pretty strong wins. Hey, um, okay. So, um, what would you say is the biggest appeal of sailing? The exercise. The exercise, Definitely. really. Yeah, it's, it's quite a workout. Hey, but it's it's um, almost like an unconscious workout. You don't have to think about it, or at least I don't. I've never actually had to think about it because I've been doing it for so long. It's like second nature, but. After a day of sailing, you will come off the water, and after half an hour, you will realize that you have worked every single muscle in your body. Take that bodybuilding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you get like very. You don't build mass like um, what's yeah. his name Raven did, but you you really Spider. become lean. Yeah. And strong, and you know how to you gain the knowledge of how to use your weight to its best advantage. Lovely. And for you? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. I actually I like the speed that you just generate through your own hard work mm -hmm. and the physical battle between you and the boat and I just like all the elements of it I love it do you guys I know you you're quite serious about your sport but do you just at any time just take your 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 little boat out there just to enjoy being on the water or on the ocean or on the dam I do it quite um well I should say I do it quite often because I live literally on the water, but uh, school and my other extramurals get in the way. But there are times when I just come home from school and it's been like a long day, and you know you're not in the best frame of mind. You're like, okay, let's just let's just go for a sail, and you can you can just sail it like it's ten knots, so it's like twenty kilometers per hour, and there's small little waves and like the sun setting, and it's just it's like a form of meditation. It's like repetitive mm -hmm. movement that's second nature to me because I've been doing it for so long. And it's still a bit of a workout, but you can just rest. Ah, don't you just hate it when school gets in the way of, of being <laughs> the worst Always. day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you both are gearing up for the World Championship in Laser Team. Yeah. yeah. So what kind of preparation goes into that? Uh, I would say a lot of physical preparation and cardio, keeping yourself fit. And you want to be... For this regatta coming up, it's light wind, so you want to be as the lightest possible weight you can be at the moment. Mm. Because you don't want to be going too heavy, otherwise lighter people have an advantage on you because weight plays a big play in sailing. Oh, like Formula One, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Oh, yes, but yeah, obviously, like you said, uh, mm. you, you, you're harnessing the power of the wind. Hey, and yeah. you want to move as swiftly as you can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, will this be your first international event? It will be my first international event um, because I've, I'm relatively new to the competitive scene. Is it? Yeah. All right, if people, and, and for you? I've done um, one before when I was 13 years old in 2012. I was selected for um, Optimist, which is a different type of boat. And I went to Dar es Salaam in Tanzania for the African Championships. At 13 years old? Yeah. No, um, Op is the type of boat where you sail from like 6 until I think the age limit is like 15, 16. Mm. So, I mean, that was the normal age. It was the normal age to go to an international event and <laughs> yes. compete in a sport. I think you can do this. <laughs> that's, that's, pretty an, um, that's a pretty amazing accomplishment. Thank you. So, um, if people are interested in... Uh, maybe uh, finding out more information about how to join a club. Where can they get that information? Uh, you can go onto the SAS website, or all the clubs have websites. So Ziga Flair website. And if you go onto SAS, they have all the SAS clubs that are linked to SAS, and you can get all their details from there, and all training courses and that to learn how to sell, to find out more, and how to take part in the sport. All right. You know, uh, we were we were lucky enough also to have somebody from the uh, Royal Yacht Club. The new general manager was on the show a couple of weeks ago, and uh, you know, there's a lot of effort being put into development and getting people who want to do sailing to uh, to come out there and try because they have the facilities. So at least from that perspective, people who don't have the equipment yet can can still go and try it out. Hey, and there are a variety of other programs similar to the one at um, Royal Cape. I think there's one in Simonstown, and I think there's another one based at Secret Flare Yacht Club, which will help the more underprivileged 
people to get an opportunity to sail as well because um, it's very financially demanding. It's it's a beautiful sport, and it. Um, I mean, I can see uh, you guys look so zen <laughs> <laughs> being on the on the water all the time, and 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 surely blessed for the for the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, thank you for joining us. And I hope you come back with uh, with big news from your international <laughs> tours. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. All interview. right. Um, that's all from sailing for today. Uh, now it's time for that Bashers competition. Remember, Bashers has been around for more than 120 years. And with their assorted flavors, uh, surely one of Cape Town's favorite cool drinks. For your opportunity to win that case of assorted Bashers drinks, all you need to do is SMS Bashers to 33090. That's Bashers to 33090. Congratulations to last week's winner, Charlene Solomon. Charlene, you can expect that case of Bashers in the mail. Now, after the break, we'll be taking a look at some footage from some other sports, so don't go anywhere. <laughs> 